Hi, Claudia here from Create with Claudia. Thanks so much for joining me. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this freeform denim quilt. Here it is right here. I can't show you the whole thing. It's too big and heavy. Uh, but it looks like that and you'll see some pictures of it. You saw some at the beginning of the video. It's a lot of fun to make. Again, it is a freeform pattern. So I did do a layout for you. If you go to my website, www.createwithclaudia.com, there's a PDF there that has the pattern as well as some instructions. Also, there's a step-by-step -step photo tutorial of how to put it together as well. But really the, the real work comes with, from the freeform part and that's when you put it together and lay it out yourself. So I hope you have fun with this project. And if you do me a favor, I'd love it if you'd hit the subscribe button. I always love new subscribers. Thank you so, so much for doing that. And I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Create with Claudia. So check it out when you have a chance. I post all sorts of things daily from other people's projects on my Facebook page. I also post Instagram photos daily, sneak peeks of projects I'm doing, upcoming projects, all sorts of things. So again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you do give this quilt a try. It's a lot of fun and it's really easy. Have a great day and enjoy the video. Okay, so here's my quilt. I'm getting ready to show you how to lay it out. As you can see, I used all sorts of different variations of denim in it, um, from dark, real dark, to indigo, to medium, to light. I love the way that looks. You can use whatever colors you want. I had a little bit of, when I was trying to come up with the pattern in the video for this, I was having a sort of a, a, a brain block, I think, because it is a freeform quilt, so I want people to just lay it out however they want. But I know some people really like to have a pattern, and I think it's a good starting point to have that pattern. I think that helps, and then you can work from there and sort of design it on your own. So that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm not going to show you how to make the entire quilt. I'll show you how to make the units and maybe put together one row. But other than that, I'll explain how it goes together, and then you'll see um, the finished product. So I'll get started now, thank you. Okay, so like I said at the beginning of the video in the introduction, uh, you can find the complete tutorial for this quilt as well as the downloadable PDF file which has the full pattern and a, sort of a grid layout for you on my website at www.createwithclaudia. And so I'm just gonna show you though the basics that you're gonna need to get started. First thing you're going to need are the squares to make your half square triangles because there are some half square triangles in here. So from your denim pieces, and you're going to need larger denim pieces, so probably not kid sized jeans will work for this, I would say adult sized jeans for this. You're going to need 28 squares cut 9 and a quarter inches. So 28 squares cut 9 and a quarter inches. You're going to need rectangles, and from the rectangles you're going to need 39 rectangles cut four and a half by eight and a half inches. So 39 rectangles. And lastly, you're gonna need squares cut four and a half inches, and you're gonna need 62 of those. Now, when I made my quilt, I made a lot more, I cut a lot more pieces just so I could play around with them and see how they fit. And the basic sort of design premise of this quilt is that you have units, whoops, wrong way, basically, your unit, like this half square triangle, which I'm going to show you. This half square triangle measures eight and a half inches. And when I originally started desi to design this, excuse me, I wanted eight and a half inch blocks because I knew I wanted the finished quilt to be about a lap size, so 56 by about 72. So I took 56 and I divided it by eight. I, for some reason, I just wanted an eight inch block. I don't know why. And that's what I started with. But then I thought, well, I don't just want the quilt in half square triangles. I'd like to have some squares and some rectangles in it. And that's where I came up with these different units. Basically, this eight and a half unit divided by two. Remember, you have the seam allowance, so you get some four and a half inch ones and some eight and a half inch ones. These two together, if you had two squares plus your rectangle it, sewn together, make you give you another eight and a half inch unit. I know it sounds a little weird and I'll show you later how to do it. Um, and my math skills aren't the best, so I hope I'm explaining it clearly. That's why it probably would help to go to my website. If you're really interested in making this, that would help you a lot. It, it lays it out pretty, pretty succinctly for you. 
but we're going to go ahead and get started and I'll show you first how you make your half square triangles. It's pretty easy. You need two of your two of these nine and a quarter inch squares. Let me find another one. And I would put maybe different shades together, maybe a lighter and a darker, or different different ways that you can sort of sometimes see the pattern of the denim, maybe opposite sides that make for a little bit more interest. You're gonna line them up on top of each other, right sides facing, like so. So one thing before I start sewing anything, and I, I should have mentioned this earlier, is the option of using interfacing. These days, jeans are pretty stretchy, a lot of them. I know a lot of mine are. I need that extra stretch, and you can see that stretch. It might be wise to put a little bit of woven fusible interfacing on the back of each piece. It's up to you. This piece doesn't have any stretch in it at all, these jeans. But some do, and if you prefer having a more stable piece to work with, by all means, go ahead and put that on the back of all your fabric. It's funny, when I first made this quilt, there were so many things to keep in mind. Denim is a totally different type of sewing than uh, with regular sort of quilting fabric. So it's something that you have to keep in mind from needles to stitch length, all sorts of things. So it might be worth it to go check out my video on the 15 tips I learned or the 15 things I learned when I made this quilt originally. So I'm gonna sort of heart, uh, go back to that every once in a while when I give you a tip, but it might be worth it to go watch that video too. So anyway, today I'm not going to use the fusible interfacing. It's up to you. They, I love this. They have a real nice lightweight cotton one that I really like to use when I, when I need it. But for the half square triangles, again, we're using the two, two of the nine and a quarter inch squares. And we're going to draw a line diagonally from corner to corner. Okay, so there's your line. That's gonna be your sewing guide, not your sewing line, it's your sewing guide. And you're gonna sew down a quarter inch on each side. So I'm gonna go do that, I'll be right back. Okay, so now you can see where I've sewn down each side, a quarter inch on each side of the, the drawn line, and you're gonna cut now along that drawn line. So you're gonna cut along that drawn line, and this is where a nice handy, heavy duty, and nice sharp rotary cutter helps. And then you're going to fold, uh, uh, unfold it uh, and press it open. And there you have one of your half square triangles, or you have, actually end up with two. And see there you can see some of that lighter color of the denim. I'm going to press these, and I'm going to press that seam open. So I'll show you that. I'll be right back. All right. So here is this block, the half square triangle, pressed open. And now I'm going to trim it down to eight and a half inches. And this is where I love this nice big ruler. It has a nice diagonal line, which I line up along this diagonal line of the seam that I just did. Let me move that. Okay. And then the first cut is really just to even out this edge because that's gonna be the edge I'm gonna measure from. So I'm just gonna make sure Hard to see on the dark jeans, but we'll give it a go. Okay, whoops. There we go. Get off that little dog ear there. You're gonna turn it around, and then like I said, this is gonna be your nice sharp, sharp starting point. You're gonna find your eight and a half inch intersection here. Line that up. Make sure your diagonal is still lined up with that seam. And then we are ready to cut. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, so get all these fuzzies out of the way. There's your half square triangle. So once you've cut everything, you have all your half square triangles, you're ready to go. It's This comes the fun part, at least for me, this is my favorite part. And this is laying out the quilt design. And this is where your creativity can shine. And I think it's one of the reasons I have problems presenting this freeform pattern, um, because it really is freeform, it's just that. You can lay it out any way you want. But I'm going to show you a row. I won't sew a whole row because it'll take too long, but I'll just show you how you lay them out. And 
Like I said before, it's 56 across by 72 down, and it's divided into nine rows. So really the plain around part comes in each row, but you just wanna make sure that each row is gonna be the same length after you lay it out. So you're just gonna take maybe a half square triangle, maybe you like that rectangle there. Here's a square, let me find another square. And now I've already sewn together a couple units so we could play a little bit. Here we go, you could make me make it this way. This one's already sewn together. That was two rectangles. I mean, you get the idea and you just go across until you have the length that you need. And then you start sewing. Now I do this definitely, um, it takes me a couple days. It took me a couple days, excuse me, to, to decide on my final layout. I laid it out on my basement floor, took pictures of it, came back, took more pictures of it. Uh, I think it did maybe take two or three days altogether when I was, until I was finally happy with the layout. And then is when I started to sew my rows together. So once I'm happy with my layout, I go ahead and I get ready to sew. And this is where you want to stay a little bit organized. You can keep it on the floor if you're going to sew this all in one day. And you can just pick up piece after piece. That's an easy way to do it. Or you can label rows. Maybe I always like to label row one in, um, in my top left of a row. And I put a little piece of paper and a pin up there. And then I stack up my fabrics. It's really up to you how you want to stay organized. But you want to make sure you keep each row separate. And that's why I thought when I was doing this, for me, it worked best that I did one row at a time. So in this case, if this, let's pretend this was the whole row for the first row, this unit's already sewn. I would wanna go ahead and sew this smaller one together first. So I would sew these two together, press them and sew them to this. And that way I would have another square unit. So I'm gonna do that really quickly and I'll show you how that turns out. Okay, so there you can see where that's been sewn together and then it was sewn to this one. And then your row would be ready to sew together. So you would sew all three or however many you had in your row and you would finish up your row. And that's basically how you do it. And then you would go to your next row and do that one. So that's basically how you sew the rows together. The guideline should help you. And again, you can find that on my website. Here is the finished quilt. Nice, big, comfy, cozy. I made it really nice and warm. I did use fleece backing on the back, uh, excuse me, fleece backing on the back of it. You need about four and a half yards to, uh, to back the quilt. You could use regular quilting fabric as well. I did put batting in it. It's up to you if you wanna use it or not. That made it even extra warm, but it also made it really thick to quilt through. And that's another reason um, you might wanna check out those tips, that video I did on the 15 things I learned. It was really thick to quilt through with those three layers. So you might wanna leave the batting out. And also, of course, if you don't want such a warm quilt, you could leave it out. For the binding, I used regular quilting cotton. However, I normally bind my quilts with uh, using a two and a half inch strip. But for this quilt, I used three inches. It's a really thick quilt, so I wanted that extra sort of uh, measurement to um, make sure I was able to cover the back. It covers it nice and amply. I just like that bigger binding for this quilt. So that's it. That's how you make this great, awesome quilt. I love it. It would be great outside. I think it'd be a great picnic quilt. I hope you do give this blanket a try. It's lots of fun. It's a great way to use up your old jeans, torn jeans. You can see <laughs> paint stains on here. There's a lot of reasons I don't get rid of all of these old jeans. Sometimes I donate them. Sometimes I can't. Um, but this is a great use for them. Nice gift for somebody too. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I always love it when I get new subscribers and thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. Also, I'm on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, give me a follow. I post things, try to post things daily, sneak peeks of projects I'm doing, all sorts of things. So again, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Mm -hmm.